Here we are again with this old Honda HRS 21 lawnmower. Now, if you guys haven't seen the original video of this of me diagnosing what went wrong with it, it basically lost compression while I was using it and stopped running. And that video, I took it apart and went this whole step and went from there basically. And I'll show you guys just what I'm talking about. But both of the valve guides are in really good condition, so I'm not worried about them. But right there to the right is the part that needs to be ground down and basically reseated with the new valve, that mating surface right there. So you guys can kind of see how, you guys can kind of see some of the condition of how they are in there. The intake valve, which is the larger one on the left, doesn't look to be in too bad a shape, but we'll, like I said, we'll go ahead and do that anyways. So I've got the old valve and the valve lapping tool in there just to make sure that everything is copacetic, and it should be. First thing you want to do though with the new valve is make sure that it's nice and clean from any sort of debris or oil. Make sure the suction cup part of your lapping tool is nice and clean. And then just pretty much do this. That's all it takes. So we'll apply a little bit of valve gre uh, lapping grease on here. One of the good things about this stuff is you really don't need all that much, but you just want to get the top of the mating surface as best you can and you'll end up having to clean it all out later which isn't a huge deal and the unfortunate thing about doing this is it does take a while so you just kind of want to be patient but I'm just going to feed it through there and there we have it and you guys can hear that this is what you're going to have to do over and over for a while. This particular motor, it's not, it's not the easiest to do it like this. It's a lot easier to do on flatheads, but you're just going to have to take your time and go from there. I'm going to spend about four or five minutes doing this. So the next fun part is uh, starting the honing of the cylinder, which hopefully this little tool here, which I bought to use on another mower, will work. It's actually got a flexible end on it. But these, this is a honing tool, and pretty much what you want to do is WD-40 will work fine for this. Some guys have you know, all sorts of different recommendations to use for honing oil, but WD-40 is more than fine, and this is pretty much the standard for what everybody uses. But just spray a little bit inside of the cylinder. I've already cleaned out the cylinder, and I took both of those valves out. And then I'm going to pre-wet the stones a little bit. And you want to go slow. every now and again, spray some more WD-40 in, so let's see what we've got, definitely some metal cutting going on. So let's clean out the inside of the cylinder and see what kind of shape we're in. So you're not going to get everything, but some of you might remember the bottom part of the cylinder. There's all that white. It was wear on the cylinder wall, but it was all white, and uh, it was almost like a stain.
but those stones took all of it completely off. So I just got to uh, clean it out a little bit better and we'll get ready to start reinstalling the valves and everything like that. So this is the part that can kind of be tricky, but you, I'm going to go ahead and set the valve clearance for the exhaust valve. And what you want to do is you want to make sure, this is the exhaust stroke right here, but you want to make sure the both the valves are at TDC. So exhaust, that was intake. So we'll put it back, they're both closed, would be closed if they were in there. And you can see we have some up and down play with this valve, with the rocker arm. It's kinda, it's kinda tricky to do this and there is a tolerance for it. I was able to find the uh, proper gaps for these uh, rocker arms online. I wasn't able to find anything else, unfortunately. But we'll tighten it up just a little bit. And that is pretty good to me. So for the exhaust, it's 0 0.15 millimeter. And with this one set, we can go ahead and throw our retaining nut back on. We want to avoid moving that as much as possible, and if you do move it, move it back. Right now I'm just tightening up the set nut. So I'll just make sure to double check it again. And I'm happy with that. So now we can finish up with installing the intake valve and hopefully get on to the piston and connecting rod with the new rings. So now we're getting on to the fun part. We can go ahead and remove all of these rings. We'll take a look at them. It'll probably be easier to see once I get them off. But <clears throat> all three of these are different. And how you take them off is just like this. You don't bend them off or, or break them. Simple as that. Because as you see, all of the dirt and muck that's in there, it's actually carbon buildup. You can, do, you can clean that out by breaking apart one of these rings and kind of just scraping it out. Won't be able to use the oil control ring, except on the bottom. But you basically just do this. And it works pretty well as a clean-out tool. So here's the oil control ring. And in order to install this, you're basically going to have to more or less walk it down. This can be aggravating, but you want to be careful, or else you'll risk breaking the ring. Once you have it down, it's a little bit easier to walk it in. And there we have it. There's the oil control ring. Let's get the middle ring, which this one is all black. There's no chrome on the outer edge. The top ring has the chrome on the outer edge, and you can differentiate it because it looks like this. This one does not look like that. It doesn't have that chrome ring on the outside. But this one goes on the same way that the other one went on. And again, you just kind of want to walk them on, take your time. That's all there is to it. Now, Another thing to remember, when you're re-ringing a piston, any sort of piston, you want to make sure that these gaps are really at kind of an opposite distance from each other. And that's to prevent any sort of loss of compression issues 
due to these ring gaps. Believe it or not, they can affect your compression even in a brand new motor. So you just want to make sure that they're out of the way of each other. So I got the piston in. How this thing is supposed to be reinstalled is the piston goes in first. Now I didn't show it on camera, but I coated the inside of the cylinder wall with some of this engine assembly lube. So everything was nice and lubricated inside. Now the tool that you're supposed to use to compress your piston rings is one of these. Now if you have the clearance and you're really careful, what I did was I just very carefully, one at a time, squeezed them with my fingers, stuck it in, went to the next one, squeezed that one, stuck it in, all the while making sure that those gaps I showed you guys earlier are at the correct distance from each other. So now what we can do is basically press on with sealing this thing back together. And again, to make things a little easier for us, a little easier on the motor, I should say, is put some more assembly lube all over these parts where there's going to be metal on metal contact put some inside of the piston because we're going to have to slide the wrist pin through there. There's really a lot that you have to do to make sure that this motor is not going to have any sort of issues like this. And you put everything back together. So, do the same thing with the connecting rod. Make sure that it's got enough lead to keep it happy. And to reinstall, Throw that in first. And there we have that. So now we'll just pull the piston back out. So now we'll just throw our retaining ring back in. back in place. So we'll just rotate, crank, make sure everything's copacetic. And that compression feels really good. Now we just have to commence with reinstalling everything. We have a seal that we'll have to replace. That's not too difficult. I have a new one other small things to put back on but we're definitely on the home stretch now and here's our new gasket there's the part number just have to open it up and make sure it's the right one well for now the good news is everything more or less as far as the engines concerned is back together we do have some issues with the carb namely with the jets that are inside it. Now, while I had this off, I figured I might as well take the carb apart and have a look at it. These little O-rings in here are not in the best shape. These two are fine. There's another one around the bowl which is okay. I put a little bit of uh, Vaseline petroleum jelly on it to assist it to get it back in, but unfortunately, the one that was on this one disintegrated. And the pieces from it are all over the ground, but I figured, hey, might as well just see if I can find another O-ring in my kit, which I have right there. Nope, don't have the right sized O-rings. They need to be about half that thickness, and would you believe it if I told you guys the kit for this thing, for just for five O-rings, is $13. It's insane, right? Or they don't make an actual rebuild kit that comes with all of these pieces anyways. At least not that I've been able to find. So, if you actually do want to rebuild one of these carburetors, 
you have to buy all the parts separately, or at least the ones you know you're going to need. But this gasket set from this particular site, $16. It's $3 cheaper on eBay with free shipping. I don't think these guys give you free shipping, but it's just another snag you run into when, when you're dealing with older equipment like this. It's uh, oftentimes not really the easiest to find parts for them, nor is it cheap. If I wanted to buy a brand new carburetor for this, 60 bucks. So hopefully the next time you guys see this thing, it'll be in running condition, I hope. You know, I think I'll try to uh, get the carburetor all sorted out on it and hopefully it'll start. I did throw a brand new spark plug in and I did double check and make sure we are getting good, nice, healthy, clean spark. So looks like it's uh, just got to play the waiting game for some more parts. Typical stuff. You all stay classy.